Hello and welcome to my studio. This is Patty Cunningham and I want to talk today just very briefly about um, water con watercolor consistency. The, in my opinion, the, uh, as a teacher and somebody who's been doing watercolor for over 20 years, um, I think that the key thing to understanding watercolor and controlling it is the ratio of water to paint the ratio of water to pigment. Um, and so that's what I want to talk about today. If you understand that, you'll be able to control how much water you'll be able to control in uh, blooms. Uh, you'll be able to do a lot more with your paintings. I'm going to get a little puddle here of green. This is perylene green. And I'm going to make a puddle here. And I'm gonna make this puddle, it's gonna be a lot of water and just a little pigment. And I'm gonna call this a T consistency. It's, it's gonna be very runny. See, it needs to be runnier than that. It needs to be able to run kind of all on its own, kind of like that. And then you know it's a T consistency. This consistency of watercolor paint is generally used, now I'm putting it on dry paper, is generally used for initial washes. It's pretty light, it goes on easily, it can cause, when you pick up your brush, it can cause little dark spots, so those may sometimes have to be blotted up. That is often used as background, as um, how shall I say, uh, skies, for example, or the, the underpainting for a, a, a lawn or, or a field of green. Now I'm adding a little more pigment. It's still runny, teeny bit thicker, and the more pigment is gonna make it a darker color, and even a little bit more pigment. And now we're getting into a more intense more highly pigmented, slightly less water. The more intense color. You might use this as a wash if you're doing a moody scene, or you might um, add this into one of your, um, into some of your lighter washes. That can be very effective. Now when we move to cream, we're gonna have even more pigment to watercolor. And at this point, it's still wet, but it's not gonna run outside the puddle. It's gonna follow water, because um, it'll follow, so it can go down into this other puddle that I already had there. But it's gonna have a lot more body, because it's got a lot more pigment. And in most tubes of paint, it's also gonna be a lot darker. It still goes on beautifully, still covers the paper completely without any trouble. And it's nice and intense in terms of color. Now we're going to get into a, an even thicker consistency. In this puddle, the paint barely moves when you tilt it. A little bit, not very much. You can still apply this. You'll still be able to get it to stay on the paper. It's probably the most intense you can put down. Easy to get hard edges. This is great for your detail work. You're gonna have nice hard edges here, no problem. It's not gonna run, it's not gonna puddle. It's gonna stay pretty much where you put it, unless you put it next to a piece of water and then the water will draw it out. And the last level of, of consistency is butter. And for butter, there's very little water on your brush. So I am pulling the water out of my brush. I'm blotting it on my paper, on my cloth, and I'm just getting, the. it's, it's, it's akin to, now I don't have, paint in a tube. I'm just pulling the paint right off of this 
my little block here of um, dried and reconstituted paint. I'm not sure if this is still going to be. This is should be almost out of the tube because I don't use fresh tube paint. This is, should be much more difficult to put on the paper because it's that much thicker. You're gonna get a lot of spaces. It's gonna be harder to cover the paper up. It's gonna be your most intense color, but you're gonna to have to keep going back and dipping in because it's butter. It's, it's not as smooth, liquidy. It's not filling in those little holes as easily. Good for dry brush and great for details. But those are the five, what, what I wanna say, the five layers, the five levels of composition regarding paint to pigment. Try it yourself with some of your paints. Be aware too that the water on your paper is gonna impact your, um, your paint when you put it on. So if I have, let's see if I can get my brush clean now that I put all that green on it. So if you have a wet piece of paper and you put, now this is from the um, creamy consistency. This is often called charging in. You've got your water down and you're charging the color in. And then from there, you can spread it out. I do this a lot when I'm teaching. It also helps you to have softer edges. Obviously, when you've got water, it gives you more working time and gives you softer edges. And um, there's a lot you can do with this um, type of application. What you're doing automatically is you're lightening whatever color you put in here because you've already got water down. So no matter what consistency, which one of these you're using, it's going to be lighter and it's going to be wetter because you've already got water down. Now if I took, let's see if I can do a little serene blue and put that in here. Actually, so here's some cerulean blue. This is probably about a cream consistency. And if I get it over there, or even just touch it to the edge here, I'm going to get a really interesting, soft movement between the two colors. This, I forced it, and you see what happened. It pushed into where the water was. Here, I invited it. In other words, I just ran my brush along the edge and um, they're mingling. The two colors are mingling. So there's a lot you can do depending on how much water is on the paper, but understanding this difference between tea, milk, cream, yogurt, and butter consistency is, is a critical thing to conceptualize when you're painting. I use a double-sided bucket, the left-hand side I keep for dirty water and the right for clean. So good luck, keep your brushes wet. <laughs>